हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक अगेन माय सेल्फ आदिल हुसैन शेख असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर ऑटोमोबाइल डिपार्टमेंट एंड वेलकम टू द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ ऑटोमोटिव एंड कंबसन इंजन टेक्नोलॉजी एज वी हैड डिस्कशन इन लास्ट लेक्चर्स ऑफ ओवरव्यू ऑफ गैसोलीन ऑफ डायरेक्ट इंजेक्शन सिस्टम एज वेल एज वी हैव डिस्कशन रिगार्डिंग स्टेजिस ऑफ एस एंड सी आई इंजिन एज वेल एज वी हैव डिस्कशन रिगार्डिंग स्प्रे गैडेड टेक्नोलॉजी देन इंजिन डाउन साइजिंग एंड एक्सॉस्ट एमिशन आफ्टर ट्रीटमेंट डिवाइस नाउ वी आर लुकिंग फॉर अ SCR, selective catalyst reduction. But before that, we are going for stages of combustion in SI engines as well as CI engines, and we are also learn attention required in spray guided systems, and which are the basic requirements of spray guided systems as we had already learned in previous lectures. Further, we had a discussion regarding engine downsizing, and we had a lots of discussion regarding engine downsizing. How engines are how. Engine downsizing is useful in upcoming era, as well as which are the advantages of disadvantages of engine downsizing, as well as which are the possible approaches in engine downsizing, engine downsizing, and which are the basic types of engine downsizing uh, we had already discussed in previous lectures. Right now, we are going to discuss about uh, and. most important we had also discussion regarding advantages of engine downsizing compared to conventional engines how conventional engines nowadays are a uh, very rare reliable compared to engine downsize engines right so let us discuss further regarding selective catalyst reduction we had already discussion regarding selective catalyst reduction in previous lectures because how catalyst reduction used to reduce nitrogen oxides from upcoming exhaust from the engine sides as well as how selective reacts with ns3 and how can we convert exhaust into nitrogen as well as h2o right so today we are going to dis discuss regarding uh, which are the basic optimum temperature right be because uh, selective catalyst reduction operating on 300 to 400 uh, 400 degree celsius and basically higher anox reduction is achieved with the use of higher amount of catalyst basically there are two layers of catalyst as we know today's we uh, today's we are using basically three way catalytic converter platinum palladium and rhodium uh, mostly preferable catalyst using in three way catalytic converters and we are going to convert our exhaust in n2 as well as h2o with the help of selective catalyst reduction and basically the range of the scr is 300 to 450 degree celsius and we also get higher nox conversion with the help of cng catalyst with the help of scr catalyst converter right now at which surface uh, catalyst convert nox it the surface of the catalyst right majorityly we can say that catalyst convert all the nox coming out from the engine in the form of n2 and h2o this is the main advantage of selective catalyst reduction and basically we are convert only nox particles in our exhaust with the help of selective catalyst reduction now how much reduction rate we achieved in scr majorityly we achieved 80 to 95% nox conversion into our catalyst system this is the main advantage of the selective catalyst reduction right now let us discuss further of scr mainly this is the reaction with ammonia and directly we get uh, h2o as well as n2 so this is the basic reaction chain in selective catalyst reduction as well as uh, which is the main reaction with urea right basically there are two types of form of reaction first one is ns3 second one is urea in urea we are also getting co2 h2o and n2 with the help of urea uh, uh, directly reacted with upcoming nr so these are the basic reaction with ns3 as well as urea in our selective catalyst reduction process now ammonia is absorbed in properly surfaces then with the help of this ammonia right uh, we directly react with anox particle and with the help of this we can directly convert our nox into n2 as well as h2o form right 
most common catalyst as we as i discussed earlier most properly we are using platinum palladium rhodium in our set selective catalyst selection although we are using vanadium titanium tungsten and molybdenum oxide as the form of catalyst also right so this is the these are the form of catalyst we are using in our selective catalyst reduction so this is the main advantage of the scr system because it directly react with nox particles and directly convert it into n2 as well as h2o right it is the most important to maintain the temperature within the appropriate temperature window because scr operate on specified range up to 300 to 400 degrees celsius and we have to obtain this much amount of temperature in our selective catalyst reduction process so this is the main uh, we can say that is the uh, limited criteria of selective catalyst reduction right now which are the factors affecting selective catalyst reduction first one is the temperature is the exhaust temperature of the exhaust mainly temperature of the exhaust directly depend of the scr second thing is that ns3 and nox ratio right we have to implement ns3 ratio according to nox requirement right so we can convert nox directly into n2 and h2o third thing is the oxygen concentration right oxygen concentration is the main thing during selective catalyst reduction that's why we get h2o in comes out from the engine comes out from the exhaust side so these are the main factors and mainly four factor of the catalyst loading how much catalyst loading required uh, while we are using selective catalyst reduction because uh, exhaust amounts is not specified every time so we have to calculate loading probability according to catalyst requirement so catalyst loading is also main important task while selecting selective catalyst reductions now which are the selective catalyst let us discuss the first one is the honeycomb catalyst like honeycomb structure we have like uh, all the form of platinum palladium rhodium titanium in the form of honeycomb structures as well as we can also plate type catalyst and we can also corrugated catalyst we can also use corrugated catalyst in our selective catalyst range so which are the basic principle of catalyst to convert nox into h2o particles into h2o as well as n2 particles now let us discuss lean nox strap it is the another after treatment device we are using nowadays in our uh, si engines as well as ci engines right now how lean system works lean nox straps is relatively new approach to control nox from lean engines how lean engines works because in a lean nox strap catalyst the catalyst stores nox during the operation and is directly react with o2 of the stoichiometric combustion with the help of this what we get right the after the storage of accumulating the this nox particle we can directly reduce nox from onto with the help of this o2 uh, o2 reach uh, o2 contamination and lean formation so this is the main advantage of the lean nox trap because lean nox trap is a relatively new approach uh, nowadays we are using right the lean and reach modes of the operations are refer to the sor uh, sorption and regeneration sorption means we can say that is the oxidation process and regeneration we uh, mean we can say that is a reduction types of process in diagram you can see that uh, nox particles directly react with o2 and there is a one spe uh, specific catalyst we are using al2 al2 o3 form right so this is directly convert nox particles into n2 as well as h2o form so we can directly benefit ns3 uh, sorry we can directly benefit nox into uh, n2 as well as h2o right the operation cycle is with very regeneration processes and very effective to convert nox into n2 as well as h2o right the reach in the reach condition what we are doing right basically we are we can say that nox particle directly convert with uh, directly react with catalyst in the presence of lean stoichiometric mixtures and it directly convert nox particles into n2 
as well as H2. So these are the main advantages of lean NOx trap system. Basically, there are two types of process: oxidation process and reduction process. And we are using K2CO3, KNO2, as well as KOH as a catalyst while using lean NOx trap formation. So we can get directly NOx into N2 as well as H2. So this is the main advantage. We are using lean formation mixtures or lean stoichiometric mixtures in our lean NOx trap system. NOx directly trapped in this particular systems and we get direct the form of N2, right? Now, in this particular system, we are also getting uh, basic uh, requirements of NS, NOx particles uh, which are coming, uh, which coming out from the engines. And the main benefit of the lean NOx trapped system is, right? Mainly, it uh, controlling SC and uh, CO emissions parallelly right this is the main advantage of the particular system in uh, slide you can see that the main benefit of the nox system is directly store the nox separately and it can also reduce sc and cox uh, particles coming out from the engine this is the main advantage of the lean nox systems right and basically there are two primary disadvantages first one is see every system has its own disadvantages Right, so first one is the initially cost of and second thing is the sensitivity of the sulphur. Right, so how can we say that is it a, a disadvantage from the exhaust system because it cannot uh, directly affect to the sulphur particles. Right, so this is the main disadvantage. First one is the primary cost of the system and second thing is the sulphur contamination coming out from the exhaust side. So this is the main disadvantage of the lean NOx system but uh, otherwise it is the um, most usefully in SI engines as well as CI engines, right? So, and uh, we can also include catalyst cost, right, in this particular system because every time uh, catalyst is the main uh, things which are uh, which convert directly NS uh, NOx particles into N2, H2O, and uh, non non emitting device, uh, non emitting gases, right? So. Uh, we can also consider catalyst cost in this particular lean NOx trap system, right? Both of the sulfur issue and cost of issue uh, recently mainly uh, research parameters in lean NOx systems, right? So these, are, these are the mainly lean NOx trap systems. In further, uh, in further lectures, we are also going to discuss about stratified charge as well as we are also going to discuss about basic requirements of turbocharge in SI engine. So, till date, thank you.